Hello and welcome back to Yes Guy Gaming, and today we're doing a little bit of a different video. This one's going to be um, a video where I play through a chunk of the Toronto Film School project that I was lucky enough to be creative director on called Project Vanish. We're going to take a look through um, and I just wanted to show you guys and anybody else interested out there just some of the thought process and kind of what goes into uh, some of the level and game design in this game. It's one of my proudest pieces of work that I can actually show and so you know for my career and for some fun uh, I wanted to take a look back at some of the stuff we did and just go through some of the thought process what I thought we did well and some of the stuff that I would now years later that I would go back and, and try to improve on so hopefully you guys enjoy that hopefully it's something that's worthwhile and uh, so let's get to it so we're talking about we're gonna start off with the tutorial section of the game um, this is one where we wanted to introduce everybody to the character the mechanics the story everything that was going on so we you know obviously when you first get there you have no you know you kind of yeah we show you the splash screen on the loading screen of the controls um, you can always hit escape and go to the options menu um, to check out the controls if you're unsure about what's going on but uh, you know that's a pretty standard thing but people don't have any idea really what's going on in the game you know why am I doing this what are some of the things I can interact with so we wanted this first chunk of the game to show the player everything that they can see in the game so some of the ways we used we we did that um, were with dialogue prompts from the voice acted characters in the game so you'll hear Dr. Sila who was one of the enemy characters in the game kinda come over the loudspeaker in this facility and and just kinda give you some insight into the story so his first line of the game I think comes up when I just move a little bit so I'll just listen attention soldiers of my facility Somehow, my last two experiments escaped their containment cells. Bring them back to me immediately! Not going to happen, Doc. You think I'm going to find hats attractive now that I have a helmet? Vanish. I mean, visors are kind of sexy. Vanish! Yeah, so th that's how we kind of wanted the story to play out. We were hoping it was going to be kind of a funny thing. Um, so, you know, you're basically told through that dialogue that, hey, we escaped. Or escape with her helmet AI vanish and they're trying to escape with her super powerful experimental abilities and she's trying to get out I mean if you ignored that you could still pick up the game but that was kind of the hope um, for those dialogue lines that the player would have some idea what they're doing um, ASD and W are kind of the movement keys and you use the mouse to look around but uh, you come to this first door and we wanted to use these um, splash screen prompts to really be clear we we what, what we really wanted to do was find a way to make it obvious to the player what they had to do without doing that but we just couldn't find a way we didn't have the resources so we thought you know what we're just gonna show we're gonna make it as clear as possible here's a massive prompt say hey this is what you gotta do to move forward so whenever you see a sign like this the F key will pop up the dialogue or the the kind of the UI prompt came up at the bottom saying press F to open these doors and um, we wanted to make it as clear as possible we experimented with some other things where you kind of just had to figure it out or we used a dialogue prompt for that but we found that people just didn't get it um, so this is pretty clear when you approach the F key comes up so if you have no idea what this is you come there F come, okay I'm gonna press F oh, okay open I see I hear the door open something changes the smoke comes it's now different so we want it like the whole point of what we wanted to do in this first section was make things as clear as possible and with as little risk as possible we didn't want anybody to have any you know die or have any problems or anything like that so you know this first section I, I like it I mean I think it explains things well enough it's not perfect obviously but uh, I, I think at least introducing how to open doors is you gotta interact with that thing who we are dialogue prompts stuff like that is I think a good start so then we come here and press C or shift to crouch. Well, I wanted to prove like when the player makes it past this point, I know that they know how to crouch. Like they at least have to crouch to get past this section. So this chunk of wall is a little bit too, too low for them to just run through. Um, and so the player has to crouch to get underneath. Um, when Aura crouches, she says sneaky sneaky like she has a dialogue prompt to let you know that she is stealthing. That was the entire intent behind that. But so now I can get under if I use my crouch ability to get under. Um, the one problem we ran into is because we have the teleport ability. And when we first implemented this, you could 
use hold the teleport and just teleport right under. So if you were just pressing buttons and fooling around, the space bar is the teleport. You'd find a way to get under right away. But so I added a uh, a collision box there for the teleport, so that you actually can't do that to start the game. There's no way to get through without actually crouching. I don't think this is perfect. Like. Uh, you know, some games they'll limit the abilities you have so that you know you learn each one one at a time. Right now the player has all their abilities, which I don't mind, but I think it was a decent solution just to make sure that I know the player can crouch once they make it through this part of the game, which crouching is pretty key in a stealth game. It's how you really are stealthed in the game, crouch below cover, so wanted to make sure that before we moved on any further, you knew how to open doors and crouch. Those were the two most important things we wanted to get through in this tutorial. So we come to the next section where it says hit left click to fire a projectile. So this is a bit of a puzzle and a tutorial in one. So if I hit left click, I shoot the projectile at the door and nothing happens, right? So I learn to shoot the projectile. If I play around with it as a player and I hold it, I see that my, my, my character charges it up and it seems to grow and get more powerful and collect power. Okay, so maybe I charge it up and shoot it at the door. Now still nothing happens. Um, I, you know, I like this section, like the lighting and everything here draws your attention forwards and kind of one of the things you notice is that thing above the uh, above the door there. So, you know, my hope was that the natural conclusion for the player was, okay, I've been told to use the projectile and so maybe I should shoot this thing. Um, you know, so if they did that, they would find, oh, okay, there's things in this game that I can shoot and that will, will open doors. Um, I'm not sure that this is the best way to introduce the projectile. At least I know when they move past this point that the player knows how to charge, use the projectile, and hit things to open doors, which is going to come in to play later in the game. Um, but a player could just get stuck here not knowing to actually shoot that. Um, so I think if I, I, I maybe would have wanted to make it a bit more clear, hey, shoot this. Maybe we could have made some better lighting or made that, that actual thing look a little bit more like a target. Um, just to kind of really draw the attention, hey, shoot your thing and shoot it here. Um, I think it could have been a little bit more clear, but uh, still pretty happy with this situation. Um, the other thing that comes up in this area is unprompted is that there's secrets that you can collect throughout the game. There's these collectibles that we don't actually tell the player overtly about, which we kind of decided to do that because we thought, you know, this will be something that if you're looking for, like if you really want to look at every nook and cranny, you'll actually find something. Um, and in this tutorial area, I wanted to make sure that there were one collectible for each thing that you could collect in the tutorial area, so that if you found them, you go, oh, maybe I'll look for these for the rest of the game. Um, the other thing about these was, is like, if you saw this, like, I don't know, this kind of looks like your projectile, but you wouldn't really know what it does. So we didn't really have a great solution when we, when we were nearing the end of production um, about how to explain to the player, like, what the heck this thing does when I collect it. So we had to bring in the cast again and we got some audio prompts that when you pick it up, the character will actually say something to explain it. So, you know, those aren't perfect because the player won't necessarily hear that. But I think it's better than nothing and a solution we kind of had to shove in right at the end. So when you collect the collectibles, Aura does say something. Sweet. I can fire quicker. She says that you can use your ability more frequently now or, or something to that effect um, because now the, the cooldown on the projectile is faster so there's less time between between shots which is you know what we wanted to get the player uh, like to learn the powers that I've given you are the very essence of humanity's evolution if you turn away from me you turn away from mankind we have Sila come in over the loudspeaker every now and then and we wanted to have him as the antagonist throughout the entire game you don't actually see him but we wanted to kind of keep pushing the player like give a sense of progression like as you progress through the game Sila gets angrier and angrier to where at the end in the last level he's like fully yelling and screaming forgets the mic is on like kind of in a funny way but letting the player know that yeah you're making progress he's getting angrier as you getting closer to escaping so even in this tutorial section we kind of have that throughout the various beats just to make it clear that hey he experimented on you you escaped using your powers and he's pissed about it this is another one of the uh, kind of puzzle, I don't want to say puzzle, but just uh, introductory sections here. In the game we have a bunch of elevators that you have to use, um, and you know we don't actually explain this one. We had a bit of arguments over whether or not we were going to explain this 
section to the player. Um, but we thought maybe it was best to let them figure it out using what they had already. So what we've learned already, we've learned to crouch, we've learned to open doors using the F key to interact, and we've learned that we can shoot things and they also open doors. So we, we figured that was enough that when you come to this, it looks like an elevator shaft. There is a button on the wall. So the player could do one of a few things. If they approached, they'd see the F key, which they've seen before, and so they know that if they press that, it opens a door or causes some sort of interaction. But we also left it open and the programmers put in that if you do shoot this, it has the same effect. So if the player you know, wanted to ignore the interact and they wanted to shoot this instead, that it would still work. Um, which I think was pretty important because we had a lot of people come here before we added that in and trying to shoot it and just didn't know what to do, like not approaching this, weren't sure that this was interactable. And so when we added in the, the projectile actually interacts with it, um, that helped players or people who are playtesting a lot more. So, And when I interact with it, it calls the elevator down. See, I, the, the, the button we programmed so that it just calls the elevator to you so that you couldn't accidentally send it back up. What you can do though, unintended consequences, if I wanted to send it back up, I just shoot the button inside the elevator that raises it up and then it goes back up, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, not many people did it accidentally, so we left it in there. Um, but the player can shoot the button and call the elevator back down, which we, we thought was, was very helpful. This, uh, this next door, which happens right after that elevator, um, was to introduce the, this code and keypad mechanic. So when the player first comes up the elevator, the first thing they see, and I, I wanted, I, it was important to me that it was on this side of the wall, so that as soon as you come up, that's the first thing you see. I see the code. I've never seen that before, but it's the first thing I see. It's right there. Okay, it must be important. There's a light drawing my attention to those two things, and I also see something to interact with over there. So if I behave like I have up until this point, I either shoot the thing or I go up and interact with it. So, you know, we had some people shoot it and nothing happened. So, we, you know, the idea is that you discover to go up to it, you see the F key appear. Like, okay, that's, this is something I interact with it. When I get closer, I can see that there's a keypad there. And the idea was that the player would make the connection themselves and hopefully feel smart when they say, okay, there's a code there and there's a keypad here that I can interact with and open up. So if I put in the code, something's going to happen. Ideally, the door opens, which was the intent of this section. I think I really like this mechanic, and it's not a super difficult one to introduce. Code and keypad, they're right beside each other, so make them work. But I thought it was important to include this after we had included all the other stuff so that the player knew that they could interact with things using F um, so that they weren't kind of going, oh, what the hell do we do? Um, so if you put in the code, which I think was 1100, you see the door open right beside you. Um, it goes green so that you know you've interacted with it. You don't have to interact with it again. You have that. Um, and we can move on. So this section, hold space and use your mouse to aim the teleport location and then left click to activate. So if the player hasn't pressed space bar at all up until this point, we wanted to make it clear, hey, here's a gap. You can't cross it. There's an elevator you can go down and this was probably one of the more confusing tutorial sections for the player. So if I press space and I'm looking here, you know, and if I'm at this angle and I move my mouse, I might not see the location because it's actually down there, or I might just teleport in front of me here, like on the thing, and not realize I can actually get over there. Um, so I would maybe do a, a bit more to improve this if I, you know, had it next time, maybe try to draw some more attention to the gap maybe add some more light or something so that it draws me over that way as opposed to what we saw some playtest players do is see the elevator which before they had gone to the elevator and they go up it to go to the next location so we had a lot of people go into this elevator and go down but this actual pit is just the pit down here in case the player fell um, and so you know this was supposed to catch you and bring you back up there's a collectible down here, so there was like a bit of a, hey, if you fail this, that's okay, you've actually discovered something, and you can learn from there. So this one was for the teleporter. Yes, I can teleport more often now. So that was pretty clear. I can teleport more often now. Um, but the, this, this actual fall hurts you, um, which I, I want, you know, I, we went back, I went back and forth on, I really wasn't sure. I wanted it to make sense, though. If you fell down, like, you're going to hurt yourself. Um... You know, so that's why I added this med pack here, um, which you can't collect because I'm at full health, but just in case they, you know, they fell, then you could maybe see this med pack here and maybe heal up. This, 
that you could maybe learn about this. This wasn't the intended spot for you to learn about the med pack, but if you did see it, it was something that, you know, if the player discovered, they could, you know, figure out themselves earlier than it was intended. But I think if I had to go through and do this again, I'd maybe add some stairs. Like, I would get rid of this pit, get rid of the elevator, and add some stairs just here to this pit and have, like, I don't know, a computer down there or something so that, yeah, I could... I could teleport, I could see the floor down there, so if I held spacebar, there wouldn't be any, any missing thing here. I wouldn't have to move my location around to actually see it by mistake. Um, and some stairs so that the fall wouldn't actually hurt me, I could just walk back up. But the only way I could get over was to still use the teleport. I think in hindsight that would have been a lot better and gotten rid of all this confusion about the elevator. And if I still wanted to put a collectible, I could hide it just down below on the side closest to the wall here so that it would still be hidden. I think if we had to go back and again, I think that would be an improvement I'd make, but ideally the player realizes, oh, I can teleport. I'm gonna try to teleport over there and then they see they can do it and they've made it across the gap. Again, another door here that the player can either hit F to interact with or shoot to open the door. And then what we did here was we I wanted something that the player had to crawl through just to reinforce that we want you to be stealthing most of the time. I mean, you can get up to run, you can move faster, but we want you stealthing. But we also have these explosive barrels at one point throughout the game, so I wanted the player to know how to destroy these. What we didn't include was a, a dialogue prompt, and we had one originally at this location when you came here, but we took it out because we thought there'd be more reward for the player if they come here and they see Okay, those are caution. It says caution on it, and it looks like an explosion on the barrel. It's red, which is generally a color that means explosive, um, and so that they think that maybe they can actually destroy that, and so that when they try it and it works out, I'm definitely a superhero now. And it works out for them. They go, "Oh, I did that. I discovered that it was you know that's maybe a good feeling that they figured out themselves. Less you know instead of us just telling them so." We had some people get stuck there, or some people actually shoot it from when they were up here and actually get hurt by the explosion, which wasn't terrible either, because then they realize, oh, explosions actually hurt me. But either way, the, the player can't make it through this point unless they discover that, hey, you can shoot these things and they'll explode to clear your way or to do other some sort of effect. So this this now is the teaching point for the med pack, and I didn't I, I was really thinking about how can I make it so that the player is gonna see a med pack and is gonna use it. So if they got hurt by the explosion or they got hurt by falling previously, they would come to this med pack and I put this thing here for two reasons. So that the player has clearance from that enemy down there, they can't be seen. In case they shoot like a head, it's not gonna hit the enemy and distract them. They're still stealth. Um, but that when they walk through this little path here, the F would appear so that the player would definitely see whether or not they interact with it, they would see that the F is there to interact with. So if they hit F, I obviously can't do it right now because I'm full health, um, which was also another piece like, okay, if I didn't get hurt by the explosion or the fall, now I'm not realizing that this is a med pack, but if I was really curious as a player, I could get closer and see that it says med station on the pack. It's got some health you know, symbols on it that imply health, and I can see from my back that, I, that I've got full health, I'm full green, um, which we hoped the player would assume, but again, it, it's not that clear. I think if I had to go back and do it again, I'd hurt the player on purpose in a, in a clean way, and then try to organize a situation where they have to heal themselves. That's the only way, um, or at least make it like right in your face. Here's a med pack, you just got hurt, give you a prompt, a dialogue, like a UI prompt, or a dialogue prompt, or something, um, to make this a little bit more clear. Because we had playtesters play and run through the game and not interact with the med packs at all, even though they got hurt. So I'd probably improve that if I had to go back and do it. And then we come to the first enemy of the game. So there's some dialogue back and forth between Aura and Vanish, just discussing that they're ready to kick some ass. I mean, I think there was a funny line. Um, are they still talking? Yeah, there was a funny line where... Um, you know, they're talking back and forth about they're ready to kick ass or the butt kicking team. We wanted those dialogue lines to be funny and to try to make it light because, you know, these enemies are actually pretty comical. Um, but as you enter, hopefully you're stealth. We made this guy's sight radius 
a little bit less so I can stand this close to him which is less than the other enemies so that if I make a mistake I'll hit that dialogue prompt reminding me hey be stealth and you can do a melee attack to dis disarm the enemies you don't see me. You don't see so I remind myself hopefully to be stealth so that I can approach this guy with the dialogue prompt to make it clear that hey right click is gonna kick this guy and, and knock him unconscious and that's something you want to be doing if you want to make traversing easier so ideally the player comes in this is the first thing they see and then they kick the enemy and hopefully they moved on but this is probably this is my biggest problem with this section and I, I I couldn't find an elegant way to change it I kick the enemy but he gets back up and he starts looking for me and if I haven't moved on from this location like yeah I can move back here but he keeps searching and he'll like he'll probably find me is the thing and then I'll get into a fight which you know we didn't really want like okay so now I'm good so he's gonna make his way back to his spot but if I had maybe gone left or as soon as I knock him over he wakes up and then he's probably gonna find me again which you know maybe I would I would go back and maybe change it so that he either just gets up or that there's a lot more safe places for me to be in this room um, and add some more cover and stuff like that because this guy's gonna slowly walk back to his spot I don't even know where he is He's going to slowly walk back to his spot from wherever the hell he was. See, there he is. And if I, I didn't see, I can't see him. I haven't been taught my x-ray ability. So I might be walking around here and he sees me before I've even learned how to really deal with enemies. Like, so, you know, I was happy with how we taught the player that, yeah, you can kick them when, like, from behind and knock them out. But the, the aftermath of that is actually quite difficult. And the player could die here, which in the tutorial area is not really what we wanted. Um, so I, 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 you know, I wish I, I wish I could have made it so that he just gets back up in the same spot if we had to, if we had to do that again. So if the player safely navigates the enemy and, and heads right or left, whatever, they get to a prompt box here that tells them to hit E to use the X-ray ability. So if I do that, it sends out the blast, and I see that there's an enemy coming there. I go, oh, I better get into cover because he'll see me. Um, we were really happy with the shader that. Uh, our artist Ricardo put together for that and it's really cool that you can see him through Toby made this great ball that grows and then when it hits them you can see them through things which in a stealth game it's super helpful to see where the enemies are and uh, we made the cooldown on the ability so that there's only about four seconds or so that the ability is not active and you can't activate it yet so that to try to you know have there be a bit of oh wait oh I gotta be safe until I can hit it again but that you're not ever stuck too long without the ability so the idea here was that the player would use this to see where the enemy is and then use it to sneak around or just run up and attack them, which they absolutely could. Um, but, you know, I can see he's not facing away, he's facing away from me, and so I can go this way and avoid him completely. The other thing the player will see is that uh, power up there, um, which will help their, uh, their x-ray. So if the player is daring and uses their abilities well, teleport at the right time to stay out of detection of that guy, and get the x-ray power up before they hopefully sneak out um, get to this elevator which is already here waiting for them hit the F key like they know how to do running away from your destiny will only cause you more guilt return to me and we will forget this ever happened and here a, a nice dialogue prompt from Sila kind of pleading for the character to come back um, you know I wanted that to kind of signal that hey you've left the tutorial area you got this final door to just simply open and then you make it you get a good luck prompt hey you're done the tutorial the dialogue prompt from Sila hey please come back kind of uh, bringing the feelings of okay you're slipping away a little bit and the good luck to say hey you've made it out of the tutorial era new art changes in the hallway um, you're ready you know be, be wary because you're now out of the tutorial area you hit a checkpoint and here you are ready to kind of start the game in earnest and really attack the the tougher levels in the game so that was the idea behind the uh, the tutorial and some of the thought process but and design decisions we made and the mechanics and the, the level design and so I'm pretty happy with how the introductory section turned out um, given the mechanics that we designed um, I think players when they arrived at this point um, they may have gotten stuck at some points throughout but when they arrived at this point, they were ready for what the re what the rest of the game was going to throw at them. They had seen every mechanic that we have up until this point, and they 
were sure to have used the few that you needed um, to make it through. If I had to go back and, and kind of look at it again, I would have liked to maybe use the teleport a few more times in different ways. Like have a, maybe one where there's a bunch of enemies looking down a hallway that you can see um, and then you have to use the teleport so that the player has to use the teleport to avoid enemies because the only situation because the teleport is extremely useful in this game but the the only time we had the player use the teleport was to go across a gap which does happen in the rest of the game but it's also incredibly useful for avoiding detection and there was no teaching moments for that in the tutorial so if I had to go back I'd probably make that change and because we found that players would make it to this point and, and not really use their teleport as much as they definitely should either for speed or for staying undetected or for avoiding sight lines so it's probably the biggest change that I would make but overall pretty happy with how that turned out and the rest of the game too so well I hope you guys enjoyed this video I was a bit in depth and maybe a bit long but I wanted to go really into some of the thought processes and mechanics and some of the, the design decisions that I've made and just take a review for myself and for anybody interested in watching out there just to get you know to do some learning for myself like hey what are some things I've done in the past and what could I do better but also for you guys to get a sense of kind of what I do and, and you know what I'm hoping to make a career out of in, in video game design and development and, uh, and also just to show off some of the great stuff that the team made on Project Vanish back at those Toronto Film School days uh, a couple years ago so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, thanks for watching and we hope to see you next time on Hiss Guy Gaming